Cheat3 here. This is the full tutorial for how to build the Rainbow Road Lego Puzzle Box. This is one of the best puzzle boxes that we have. I know you'll enjoy it if you spend the time assembling it. So we're going to start by putting together the base of the puzzle box. Um, and we're going to continue after we put the base together to build up the rest of the casing, the walls. Um, we're going to have to come back later and maybe uh, take some of the walls off to insert some of the components on this puzzle box design, but it won't be too much of an issue. So let's get started. Uh, we'll start with this uh, open square. There's an, a 2 by 2 button that will come through here, and so we're going to make a hole into the base. We do that with, with four 2 by 2 corner plates. Just going to bring those together, and that's where our button will sit. We're just going to enclose that these other plates. You'll notice I'm using white as a color for everything that faces external, and I'll be using color for everything that is not exposed externally so that the interior of the box will be colorful while the exterior will be uh, nice and clean white. And there we have it. That's the base of the box. Now if you can make this out of uh, other shaped Legos that's fine as long as you end up with this pattern on bottom. So now for the second level, let's lock some of these in place. Start with the exterior, then it becomes a little bit easier to contain these other pieces here. I connect two of those corner tiles, or corner plates, and there's two more. Just lock some more in place here. And wherever I'm using tiles, you're going to want to use tiles. Tiles are these smooth pieces, and in puzzle box design, having tiles is important because it allows movement. So here is a uh, one by three tile, two by two. I'm just really locking these pieces all together so that two levels together really secures this thing. Another one by three tile here. It's facing external, so I've used white. And then we have I'll misplace that one. It goes right. There. Now this is starting to be really firm. Alright, let's continue building up here. I'm gonna put this one running across. Again, I've used white since the ends of this touch the exterior. And here's an interior piece. And an exterior again. Button this up with these plates. One by three plate. Okay. Now we're gonna use some blocks, some bricks. So here's a one by two brick that sits down in there. A two by two corner brick. You can see it's a brick. Butts up against that. And then another one sits in just like that. And that gives us a little spot for this 2x2 two two white tile to fit right in here. You may be wondering why I've used white for these, because they're on the inside of the box, but it's going to be a little door here that the person can just open and look in, and we don't want that to be rainbow colored yet. So we'll use these other plates to just lock in these last, this last little bit here. And so, these are tiles actually. So why do I have so many tiles is because there's a lot of moving parts, parts that drop in and just have to sit there without locking into studs. Um, so there's, when you look at this in the end, it's going to look pretty simple, but there's actually a lot of design consideration that's gone into figuring out what can move where and where the structure needs to be to keep it strong. So next we're going to build up the wall. And so all of these pieces are white because they're fa exterior facing. Um, we have 
uh, one by eight, one by six. We have one by fours, one by threes, so six each of these. And then I think we have seven one by twos, three one by ones. We have uh, a tile, a one by two and a one by one tile. We have two by two corner plate, a two by two corner brick. And then these are all bricks. And we have two of these Technic bricks with hole in the center. So a one by two brick and a one by one brick with hole. So let's keep building up the walls here. I've turned all of the bricks on their side except for this one two by two corner brick. All the other bricks are on their side and the plates are laying flat. So I'm just gonna start building this out here. One by three plate. It's one by four that just sticks out a little bit over the edge. That's fine. And then one by six that sticks even further out. So this is there's gonna be a gap here. That's okay. We're gonna come back and add pieces in there later. Now this big long one by eight. So we have a little stud drop here and then another drop and then that bottom drop will put this one by three brick just like that. Walls are starting to come together here. I'm gonna put this plate in first because it's gonna be hard to put that in after the brick goes in. Another brick on top here. This brick is right there. So this is the one with it with the hole in it. Let's just keep building here. Skip a stud. And I should have a perfect spot for this one by or this two by two brick. This corner brick. Get right in there. Now let's put this little Technic brick with the hole right in that one drop down. And a tile next to it. plate goes next to that. I have a one by one plate and a final tile. So this is starting to come together. This actually comes in on the next step. This final plate here. See this nice little cabinet we're building there. And then here's our part where we've just sort of built around a big hole. That's fine, we're gonna come back in later and add in the key parts there. All right, so let's keep building the box out. The first uh, thing I wanna do is make a correction. So I placed this one by one brick right here next to the uh, this cavity here and it actually should go up next to the Technic brick with a hole. So let me show you what I'm doing. I'm removing this brick here and I'm placing it up there. That's a correction. Okay. All right, so after that correction, we'll start here. I'm gonna place this one by three plate right there, making that level and locking it in place with this. Then we can use these bigger bricks. It's one by fours. I had shown this uh, three, a one by three and a one by one, and I'm gonna replace that with a one by four. And if you see ways to make improvements, that's fine. When we're designing these, uh, oftentimes 
the relics of past designs sort of make their way in and never get sort of updated. So just make those updates your, if you can, if you want to. There. So now we have this wall that's really forming nicely here. Uh, and let's do that on this far side. So one by four, and one by three. Again, we're leaving that open here. But now we're going to sort of lock that in. So placing a one by four brick. Don't press too hard because there's nothing sort of cantilevered right now. There's nothing holding that in place and making it strong. There will be, but just not right now. corner plate comes in. Corner plates really strengthen puzzle boxes. Uh, and so we use a lot of them. And this long one by eight plate here. It's really starting to come together nicely. Um, we're gonna build up a couple of plates on top of, um, top of this little hole area. And then Normally don't like to stack one by one plates, but sometimes you don't have another choice if you just need two. Um, and we're gonna place that there and lock that in place with a one by four plate. So now this is all at the same height. We're gonna place that here, one by eight. So the, the width of this box is eight, so we have an eight that way, and it's runs 10 the other dimension. Um, this might be a good time to talk a little bit about size. This is a really good example of a puzzle box that has been designed to be just the right size, almost as small as you can get away with. Um, and we end up making boxes about this size. They might be a little bit longer, or a little bit taller, depending on what you're doing. But this is just a really nice, almost cubic sort of size where um, the height is just smaller than the width, which is just smaller than the length. So let's just keep going here. Just build this down. I'm leaving two studs on the end here. And you'll see why a little bit later. And there we have it. This is the case. See, there's some holes, and things are going to come in uh, and populate those. Now we're going to build a couple of the keys that rest inside uh, the Rainbow Road puzzle box. So um, there's some pieces set up on the left side and on the right side here, and a few things worth noticing. Uh, first, you'll see that we have some round tiles and round plates. And those are not by accident. We don't usually use round uh, Legos unless there's a good reason. And one of the best reasons is that if you use a square one, you might ca catch an edge as there's movement on the inside. So sometimes the round pegs just move a little bit more reliably. Um, another thing, uh, we have a couple of odd pieces here. We have uh, this one rack, which is sort of a flat gear. You can see that uh, it's got these teeth in it and that can be used uh, with a gear which you'll see a little bit later to create some movement um, it's black and so it's hard to see but I don't have any other colors so I'll just try to draw attention to that as we move um, we have uh, a 2x2 two two corner tile those are a little rare so hopefully you have those this one can also be rare although I'm seeing them more frequently in Lego um, retail boxes, it's this sort of cross. Um, and sorry, I don't have a nicer color than brown of, of those, but you, you use what you have as you do and I do too. Um, so let's start with this one, it's a little bit easier. We're gonna plop these round tiles right there. Uh, and then this long piece is gonna span with a gap here. So I've connected the two by two uh, plate and this cross with a little gap in between using this tile. So this is nice and smooth on top. And a little plate to go on the bottom. 
So this is has a sort of a stair step thing in here and it actually will have that stair step movement. Um, so that's one of the keys. Um, first I'm going to just stack these uh, round plates. I'm going to put it on the bottom of the end of this longer plate here. And then we'll have a square tile on top. So that's the tip. Okay. And then on the underside, I have uh, this snap in. This is one by four plate goes under. And again, we're having a similarly a gap here. We'll use the one by two on the very end. And then this a two by two corner plate is going to stick outwards in this direction here. Just like this. Okay. We put a little tile on there. We'll put a tile on the end. And then our rack should fit right on top. So now we have this. Nice little key. So let's continue building out a few little component pieces here. Um, one thing that's worth pointing out is you'll see there's a lot of color on the inside and this, if you choose the colors in a certain way, you can actually make it look like a rainbow on the inside so that when it opens that there's uh, sort of a, a graduating change of uh, color shades. Um, so let's just start building a few of these components. There's actually going to be six components. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are very simple. Uh, so we'll start with these three. Just stacking that up. So this is a five high with a tile on smooth on top. And this is going to be similar except this is money that we're using here. And we like the money because it's the first thing you see as the puzzle box starts to open. It gives it a reward feeling. Okay, we should point out in this puzzle box there are these transparent bricks that are windows and um, there's not a really good substitution for these uh, so you kind of have to have them but they're not so uncommon because there's a lot of house uh, boxes that Lego sells and these are often on the inside of those. So th these are important because they don't have an under an under tube uh, so they can slide on a, on a single peg. Um, for example, if I, I can show you here using another one <laughs> that this moves back and forth. So here we're having one and we're just going to put a nice smooth tile on top like that. Okay, so we have three of these. We're going to do another one, except this is going to be a square instead of a rectangle. So we're going to put two of those together and just lock them in place with a smooth tile. Okay. Uh, this one, let's start with the two by three. We're going to put a tile, a plate, and a tile here. And that's just going to rest in the center of this. Uh, two by four plate and then one more of these uh, this time we're going to populate the plate on top with some tiles with some flip yeah um, and then again this is another transparent one so I'm going to put that right here the transparent doesn't have under tubes uh, there's no under tubes on this one there's no under tubes on that one Put that together, just leaving a gap here and place this on top. All right, let's assemble the big button that runs right down the, uh, the, the center of the box and locks everything in place. Uh, to start, we're gonna build the underside of the button, which is just a five high uh, two by two square. So we're gonna have the white on the very bottom because it's exposed. And we'll put a plate on there, and then finally this brick. So brick is three plates high, so this is five plates high. That's gonna go on the underside. And that's the button that, that you'll push. 
Um, then we're going to build this plate here. So I'm going to put a 1x3 with a 1x4. I'm going to lock that together with a 2x2 two two on the end. So we have this little cutout here. And then this corner tile is just going to go right on top like that. This is a cheese wedge. It's a, a slope piece. Um, you could use a tile here if you want, but most of us have these. They're pretty common. And then we're going to build up just this corner uh, that comes around. So we've got a little tile here. A, or sorry, a plate, a brick, another brick. So now this is three, three, and one, so seven high. And then a couple of plates on top. And these plates, be careful with the colors you choose because these will are coming through the top of the box. So this comes through the lid. Okay, so you can probably see where this is going, where this fits right nicely there. Okay. And then we're gonna attach the brick on the underside. The brick is going to be a little bit offset from the corner. So it's gonna be right in like this. Right there. So that's what it should look like. It's important to get this just right because uh, if it's not, then the puzzle won't solve. Okay, now for another key. Um, this one has this uh, two by three plate and we're gonna put things on top and on bottom. So let's build out the top first. Um, we're gonna use two Technic bricks. These are one by two bricks. One has a hole and the other has an axle hole. So it's important to use both of these pieces if you use two holes or two axle hole pieces, uh, it'll either have too much resistance or not enough resistance. So these are these are important pieces to get right. Okay, so we're gonna stack these next to each other here so that they line up and you can see through it if you hold it up. And we're gonna lock those together with this square two by two. And we're gonna place a couple of tiles going in the direction of the axle. Okay, this is going to sit now on top of that plate, and then we're going to put another tile just here. Okay, so this is what this should look like from here. The kids are called this the duck because it looks like it's got an eye and uh, a beak or something here. Uh, then on the underside, we're going to put this together, and you can see this is lines up in the same shape as a 2x3 tile, or 2x3 plate. Put that one right on top, so that looks like that now. It should have a little hole here, that's important to have this uh, gap. Um, and then we're going to put this round plate just right here in the middle on that corner plate lip, just above the gap. Then we've got uh, one more sort of weird thing happening here. This is often called a jumper plate. Uh, so it's sort of a tile with a center stud. And the thing that that can let you do is that can align sort of align things a half step over. And we're going to actually use that. You can see if that was Right there, it gives you this extra half step of a gap here. So we're gonna use that. First, we're gonna put a plate on the underside of it so that it's thick, like that, okay? And then what we're gonna do is um, on, the, on this gray corner plate, we're gonna put it so that it's sticking out a half step over. So we're jumpering, I they would say, uh, this little piece. And so you can see there things are a little bit just shifted off to the side with that. That's what we want. There's our duck. Okay, now I'm going to assemble a little gear with a swing arm. It's not that hard, but it can be hard to see because some of these are black. So first of all, we've got this um, this gear here, 
it's a Technic gear. It's got this sort of cross through the middle. It's not just a smooth hole, it's a cross. So we have to use a Technic axle to go through there. Then we have this uh, one by three uh, Technic arm with these holes in it. Okay. And then we have this little axle piece here. It's not an axle. I don't know what they call this. What it does is it sticks in to a hole um, and it just sort of locks in place and allows things to spin off of it without popping out. Um, so we're gonna assemble this first by putting um, this gear, this pinion. This is sometimes called a pinion gear because it's small. Um, and we're putting that axle through there. Notice I've used an axle with a, a nail head on the end. Um, that's kind of important. And we're gonna stick that through this side, one side here. And then on the other side, we're just gonna poke that through. So that's what we have. All right, one more thing before we start placing these pieces inside the casing. Um, is that there's going to be a door on this and there's some different options you have for Lego doors. Um, this is really the one that you would want if, if you didn't care about color. So it's a two high, a two brick height door um, and you see it's got a little spot for a Lego stud underneath and it has a stud on top. And so this is the piece that we're trying for. I didn't have this in white though, but I did have two uh, one brick high ones. So um, what I'm gonna use is this one here because it's white. And to get these to stay together, just put a little duct tape on there. You could put a little bit of the old craggle maybe and glue them together, but I'm not always big on that. Um, be careful, some of the doors swing from the, the opposite side, uh, so you don't want those. And if you don't have any of these door pieces, you probably have some pieces you can make a door from. Um, and so you can make a door, for example, like this one, where I have, uh, I have these pieces with the, this arm in it, and I have these other bricks that have grippers on them that grab a hold of that arm. And so you can always make a piece like this and bring it in. It's a slightly different dimension. You'll see it sticks out just a one stud further. So you'd have to um, reconfigure the box a little bit to get this in, but it would work. All right, so now we're gonna start putting some pieces in. Um, in this step, some of the walls are gonna have to be removed. Uh, and that's fine. We're just going to pull them off and put some pieces in and then put the wall back on. Um, so the first one we'll do is this piece. Remember this really simple window with a tile on top? That goes in the hole on this side here. So we'll just kind of remove the wall here. Try to keep the platform intact. There we have it. Okay, so we've actually removed some of the wall. And I'm just gonna take this piece and set it on that peg in that hole. So it should be able to slide back and forth, right like that. I'm just gonna leave it in the out position for now. Uh, the other thing we can put on now, since I pulled off this back edge, is this door. So the door goes right on like that. And I might leave it open too, okay? Now let's just push, put this all back together here. Okay, so now where we had once had a hole, we have this tile or this uh, transparent brick that kind of can slide around. And for this big hole, we now have a door. I wanna go ahead and put on this one by two plate right here. Um, just to get it in there. And you might be guessing that this bigger button that we made with the two transparent windows, is gonna slide right there on that. So you can put that in just like that. You see that can slide in and out. Okay. 
Okay, next I'm gonna remove this back wall, the one with the stair step hole here. So I'm just gonna kind of pull that off. It should come off pretty easily. Okay. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is drop in this key. So you can see this key here should slide in just like that. Okay. And on top of that key, we can now place our gear key. And the gap in the in this this key that has this rack on top with the teeth, this gap here should uh, ride right on top of one of where th this cross sticks out. Okay, it should sit there. And now these two kind of move together here. Finally, let's get this uh, pinion on in. So the, there's a hole on this side here where this uh, arm can sit. So the arm already has this, uh, this locking axle in place. So I'm gonna get that in. Might be easier to even slide some pieces out there. Just like that. And now I'm gonna take uh, the pinion with the axle and put it in that top one. And I'm just gonna swing that down here. So maybe I can hold this so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, but I'm, I'm just gonna swing that around until it can fall into this other little uh, window that we built. And then I'm just gonna lock it in place. So that axle is sticking out a little bit now. And you can see how that kind of turns everything. You might even, this might be a good time to just get it rolling and make everything, make sure everything kind of moves smoothly. Yeah, if that piece comes off right here and starts to separate, that's fine. That's actually part of the design. Okay, so you might just push it back together. Okay. Now remember this piece that we made? This is gonna sit right on top here. Just like that. And now we can reattach the wall. And this is a good time to just sort of push everything in place, make sure it's nice and firm. All right, let's assemble the rest of these innards uh, to this box. So uh, we'll start with this really simple, remember this little uh, thing that we made. That's just gonna sit right here next to the pinion gear push it in there pretty good. Okay, then we're gonna take a uh, two by two tile, and place it right there. And remember this big slider with one transparent window that we made? That's gonna sit right like this. And so that transparent window should be able to sit on one stud and sort of move around right there. Okay, um, next, uh, and the order is important here. Um, we're gonna put the duck in. So uh, the bill is gonna face the inside. So it's kind of going in like this. And you might have to just sort of move this uh, piece that we just put in just a little bit out of the way. And it should sit in there just like that. Okay. Uh, next, this uh, thing with the button on bottom should go in. So the button should line up with the hole. There's really only one way that this goes in, one orientation. So if you lift it, you should be able to actually raise it up and down as it's sitting there. And then finally, we're going to take this axle. So this is a length, uh, it's a length eight axle. Um, and it's 
eight studs long. And it's also got that nail head on the end that we like. And that's gonna go right into this hole in the back, across the chamber, through one circular uh, Technic brick, and into the axle brick, and all the way out through the other side here. Just like that. Okay. That's it. Now we're gonna work on the top. All right, so we're gonna put the top on this box, and this is basically a, 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 a rail system that a, a lid will slide onto. Um, so I'm using these uh, one by four Technic rail bricks, rail groove bricks. Um, if you can't find these or don't have any of these on your own, you can get them for fairly cheaply at BrickLink. Um, I think it's, is it BrickLink.com.org? I'm not sure. Uh, but BrickLink, you can get them and just buy them. Um, or uh, if you uh, are the first to comment in my video, I might send you some. So uh, be sure and comment if you need some of these. Um, so we've got four of these. And uh, and let's just start assembling this. So we put a gray tile here because we kind of like that gray stripe coming through nice and big. Uh, making it look a little futuresque. All right, so this is a one by eight and a one by six tile. And then our bricks come on right here. It's just sitting above that. So this is where uh, this smooth area here is where the uh, lid will slide onto. And on the back side, same thing. Now if you have a, a big long um, 1x8 brick here, you can use that. Um, but I'm going to use smaller bricks and that, that's fine as long as you sort of stagger the pattern uh, that is on top and bottom of these. You just don't want to have, for example, if I used a, um, if I used a 1x2 on top here, that doesn't really lock this uh, brick into place. It can still just pop out. So I'm going to use a different size on top sort of to cover the gap like a mason would for bricks in a house. Okay, so I'm just going to start laying these tiles on top. corner so I might put a couple of these on here one two three and four okay can see right there that the uh, rail is, is going to come right through there and there's this button that's getting in the way. This thing right here, it's going to stop it. Alright, let's start working on the uh, lid that slides into place. Um, these use this rail system, so here's the rail plate. Looks like this. Now I'm using two 1x8 rail plates. That, you might not have those. Um, if you don't, you can get away with just one single one by two rail, as long as you put it in the back. Okay, so you could put a one by two rail right here and then use just standard plates for the rest of these. And as long as that can slide, it, slide into that groove, it's still gonna work. Uh, but having the longer uh, rail plates is better and having them on both sides is better. So let's start assembling this thing. I'm just gonna pull this together just like that. And this opening is the opening that the big button sort of slides through. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's got that corner shape to it. Uh, now we really wanna lock this in place and secure it well. So I don't recommend making too many changes to this configuration because we've tried a lot of different configurations here. 
start by locking the, that side in. Okay, and we're gonna lock the top in. This is starting to already feel stronger. Okay, this big plate here sits right there. And this big plate sits like that. Corner plate. Your two by three plate. And then single studs here on the sides. All right, now let's decorate the lid with uh, these nice tiles. Uh, they're not purely decorative because they also add strength to the lid. And it's a needed layer in the lid actually, but uh, this is where you get to have a lot of fun and express yourself with color. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna pull off just the top little corner of this, um, of this button that's gonna stick out, okay? So that's what it's gonna look like. I just took that out of here for now, that's fine. That'll help us put the lid in and have this whole box in a locked position. So you can see that's gonna go right here, just like that. <laughs> uh, these are loose, I've just kind of assembled them in, in how I want them to look here. Um, so let's take that out now and just start populating uh, populating your lid with pieces here. You can make it look however you want on top. If you want to use pieces that stick out and protrude, uh, be my guest. Just do it however, whatever makes you feel good. You can spend a long time finding something that you, that you actually like trying different things with color combinations. We sort of went with this uh, rainbow look where it's changing from, you know, the uh, different, through the different hues of colors. Red here. Remember we kind of even connected it with red here on this puzzle box, just so it gives it some continuity so it doesn't look uh, like it's its own, like it's obvious that the lid is a lid. <laughs> and that's it. This is gonna slide right into here. So just a few more things before we wrap this up. Um, the first is that you're gonna need a tool. And uh, this is the, the tool that we prefer. Uh, and so this is a tool that grabs a hold of this axle here. Okay, and lets you spin this, this gear system. You can use anything that's small though, that has that axle hole in it. So here's some other options. You can even use this little coupler Right, you can imagine pushing that on and just gives you something that's a little bit uh, thicker radius to grip with. Um, but we're using this one. It has to be small enough because you're gonna put it in this door. Okay, so it's gonna just, it's gonna be sitting here in the door. And uh, when the people open that door, which is an easy thing for them to do, they will find the tool. So the tool is not disguised, it's just kept uh, inside this door. Um, a few other things. Um, the gear system is not perfect, uh, meaning that these Lego gears are are just kind of a, not perfect. They're a little finicky sometimes. Um, one other, th and so you might want to test this gear system and make sure it moves forward and backward. Um, when things are in different positions, though. Um, different uh, abilities of the puzzle box are activated. So you might not actually hit every position in the gear system until uh, you've sort of configured the other buttons and pushies and things in the, um, in the puzzle box. Uh, the final thing I'll say is when, I, when you're pushing this out, you'll notice that these, the key and the, the gear key and the key with the cross on it sort of split apart. 
And that is desirable because it sort of shows that they can be decoupled. And um, in fact, this position here is an important position because, now don't disclose this to people who are solving it, but it's important for testing. You should be able to pull this over out and disengage that key from the lock and then move, then the, um, the, the rack system should move more freely and into uh, other positions with, with this key disengaged. You should be able to push it back in in that same position and pull it all back together. And push it out together too. Um, so just make sure that when you do this that everything can come all the way out, can go in, and can uh, disengage. That, the final thing I'll say is, well, yeah, yeah you, you may need to disassemble the puzzle box and test it and make sure that you've got everything in the right position. Um, that's fine. It, it takes a while, but once everything's together properly, it does work well. So, finally you'll slide the lid on, place the key, uh, place the key in the, in the window, in the little compartment here, the cubby maybe, and push this uh, axle in and make sure everything is pushed in all the way you're ready to go. Happy solving. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for fresh content.